Fred McNeil. You're watching QAC TV7. We're in a beautiful spot. As I look at you, I'm actually looking at the Chesapeake Bay. I got the Bay Bridge in the background, and we're at the Mattapique Clubhouse. Now, I've got a couple of local characters that are going to tell us all about this uh, clubhouse. Nick, how about you and Bill introduce yourselves? I'm Nick Hoxter. My name's Bill Denny. Now, this is part two with these two guys. We had more fun last time, guys. It was 95 degrees. Bill, we were sitting on your front porch. Right. So it's a lot cooler yeah. and a lot calmer. Now, Nick, how about describe for me, where are we? What was this place? And you guys just share some memories. We'll take turns. Okay. Uh, this is the Mattapique Clubhouse. Uh, in 1930, uh, the Mattapique Ferries opened here and ran to Annapolis. Okay, 1930. 1930. We're two years into the Depression. Yes, sir. Okay, FDR is the president. I just that, want to set, that's the, correct. set this trend yeah. here. Okay. And uh, in 1938, they built this clubhouse. It's called the Mattapique Clubhouse. And, uh, excuse me, 1936, they 36, opened it. Okay. 1936. And they opened it, and it was a booming place because as the ferries came, Cross, there was only one ferry, and then um, in 1938 they put the built a new ferry called the Harry W. Lights, named after the and governor. Let's remind everybody. I mean, a lot of people don't know the world. And they think the Bay Bridge was always here. Mm. You're talking late, mid, late 30s. Yes. Bay Bridge didn't come to 52. Mm. So That's we're right. talking a light year is a difference yes. in time here. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Absolutely right. And anyway, uh, in 1938 they brought the. Uh, uh, the uh, Mattapique went from one ferry to two. Okay, so, so the pace Governor picked Lice, up a little bit. Yeah, the, the pace picked up. So this was opened in 36, and from 36 to 38, uh, it was people came here for dinner, uh, so, dances. And make sure this was a restaurant or facility owned by the ferry company. By the not, ferry not a private no, enterprise no, or not no, the government. Okay. By the ferry company. Okay. Um, so, as I said, uh, there was um, dinners. Uh, Lions Club, uh, different groups came here. And they had, had parties and stuff. All parties, yeah, yeah. Okay. In 1938, the NICE was put on, the Harry W. NICE. <clears throat> Prior to that, people would stop and have dinner before getting on the ferry, because it could be an hour, hour and a half wait for wait, the ferry. Okay. All right. But in 1938, when they put the second ferry on, people didn't have to wait. You had two ferries, one you coming, just one going. Up, so, okay. If yeah. you timed it right, so, you get right on. So this became a uh, um, kind of out of the way, and okay. only thing that kept it going was local things like the Lions Club and different things. So local service yeah. clubs. Be able to look at the set. Help everybody with geography. F from where we're sitting right now, how far are we from where the, where the ferries actually dock? Uh, if, if you, the trees weren't here, you could see it. It's right down the hill. Okay, so we're not that far no, no. distance-wise. Yeah, yeah. But, so, okay. Well, that's, let me jump to Bill Hurst. Now, Bill, um, let both of you do this. Mm -hmm. Tell me your earliest memories of this place. Uh, set everybody up, Bill, in terms of your age when this building appeared, and what were your memories of it, or even before it was built? Well, I was born July 8, 1932, and... Uh, 1932 was after the ferry, like Nick said, it, they started with in the 30s. 30s, uh-huh. And I remember the first time coming down here to Manapee, really the big thing of my life was coming down here, and my mother put me out in the Chesapeake Bay off the sandy beach. So this was a public, when I say a public, it was a beach Actually, it was to the right of this road over here, okay. and uh, she took me out, it's a big beach there. And my mom would come down, my dad, when he got off from work later on, we had W. Denny and son in Stevensville. And my mom would put me out in the water and I'd learn how to walk I wasn't, so I wouldn't be afraid of the water and so forth. But the biggest thing I remember was coming up the hill and they had a hot dog and hamburger place there. A little stand. A little stand. A little stand. Okay. Mrs. Knight, I think, ran it at that time. And uh, I would, for a... Uh, nickel I could get a soft drink and maybe for 10 cents I could get a hot dog. Not a bad deal, right? Yeah, and if I had a dollar I was sort of uh, you like go a wild. millionaire. You, you know, go wild. And, and of course that went on and on and on. I got older so uh, every time I'd come down here to go swimming I'd ride my bike from uh, Stevensville on down the road here which is three miles and go swimming. Nick and I and Bobby Larry. So it's a hangout for elementary age. Oh, and right? no cars on the road, Harley. 
So we could ride our bikes back and forth from here okay. to Stevensville. If you went down Route 8 now on a bike, you, you better be all the way over in that bike lane. Well, right? actually, you should be over following that, like in the <laughs> middle of a field or something. Because these people nowadays will run over you. Okay. And if they miss you the first time, they'll back up and get you the second time. <laughs> so your so earliest it. memories were mom taking you here, mm -hmm. learning to My swim. Mom would come down dressed me up in some kind of a sunsuit, okay. which I was a boy, but she dressed me up like a girl. And a lot of times I was embarrassed to walk <laughs> out with the other girls. But anyway, I'd go swimming, and that's where I learned how to swim eventually. And then right up the road here, we had Camp Wright running around this beach. It's a, a camp, Episcopal camp here. And I went to that when I was like six years old. And I remember sneaking away from Camp Wright, coming down here, going on one of the Maripee ferry boats, and I knew the girls there, and they'd all give us candy, and we didn't have to pay for it, and we'd come on back and share the candy with everybody in camp. And have a good time. And had a good time. We didn't know you had to pay for things back there then, you know. <laughs> now, Nick, how about your earliest remember? Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. I guess coming down here, uh, my dad uh, used to drive a truck in the evening sometimes he'd go around Stevensville pick up Billy and all the kids boys and girls and bring us down here and we swim and you know it was a different time uh, at you when you awoke in the morning mom had a big breakfast for you ate the breakfast opened the door and said see you at lunchtime or maybe I'll see you at five o'clock you didn't hang around the house no. and watch TV no 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 no, no 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 wasn't no TV but no radio and we'd get together Billy and all of us would get together get hot dogs at Frandom's or American store, come down here, spend the whole day. If you rode your bike, it only took 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And it was an easy bike ride. Oh, no easy hassle. bike ride. And yeah. if you walked, you, you, you didn't walk 1,500 feet when somebody picked you up and brought you. Gave you a ride. Because everybody on Ken Island knew everybody. Nick, now how crowded were I mean, we talking a lot during of the, people? During the week, no. But on weekends, this was the in place. This was packed. People, all they, the, the state even put... Uh, picnic tables all out here, and people would come down. Spend and, the whole day. Oh, spend the whole day. They, they, they'd uh, have fried chicken they bring and crab cake, of course. Mm. And, and uh, we'd go down on the beach and spend the day. Sometimes it'd be so sunburnt. But uh, it was just the in place for the island people. And I mean by the island people, I mean Chester. Even people from Graysonville came here. It wasn't that far to drive, you know. It was public access to the beach. Yes. And fairly safe. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah. And it when you came down where the tolls were there was a road came off to your right came here and when I worked on the ferries we parked our cars up here and walked down the steps you had a set of steps went down here to the beach and you had a set of steps here went down to the waiting room and the ferries and a lot of people during the during the uh, 30s and the 40s worked in Annapolis into the, the Treasury Department and right. they parked their car here walked down take the hill the ferry. and take the ferry and walk then that's when we came into Annapolis and they would walk right up to the Treasury Department. Okay, so and it was then, a commuter spot. That's right, and then they, they would come back. But I did want to say, sure. um, um, Melvin Clark told me, he said that um, in the mid-1930s, the Claiborne Annapolis Ferry Company had this built. And it's in the height of the Depression. Yes. So they must have had a little bit of money, right? Yeah. yeah. But they had foresight, too. They knew this place was going to grow, and sure enough, it did. And he said... Uh, after it was built, Earl Gordon, who was a former of the project, hired my father, Nick Hoxter, uh, um, Melvin Clark's brother, Vernon, picture up council. They came down here and they said, um, is there any work? And he said, no, everything's built. And he said, uh, well, we need the landscaping done. What kind of equipment you got? They didn't have they a shovel. shovel between them. <laughs> but they lied and said, oh, we got a, we got a, a mule and dump wagon. <laughs> whatever and, you yeah, need. Yeah, so whatever. And he said... Uh, I don't know. I'll give you a try, but I'm only going to give you a try. So they went up town and, and went to the people and said, hey, uh, Mr. Charlie Young, can we rent your mules in your truck? And Henry Roman, can we buy two wheelbarrows? We'll pay you when we're done. And went around and people loaned them shovels and rakes and hose. And he said, we did such a good job that when we got done, the man said, he kept you. I, I, I'm just surprised what you boys did. He said, uh, I'm so surprised and so satisfied I'm going to let you go down and clean the whole beach. And he Very said, good. that took another month. We good. cleaned all the debris and everything. So that was his, just for the heck of it, how much were you paid? Oh, he said, Dad said they worked uh, like from 6 o'clock in the morning. They get to the mule. They have to ride down here, all four of them. And, okay. and, and, and it took the mule yeah, down yeah, yeah, come down, okay. yeah, right. come down here. And he said, we worked till probably, we probably worked 10, 11 hours a day. Mm. And he said, we didn't make much money. Uh, 
Back in those days, I remember my dad worked on a farm during the Great Depression. He got 50 cents a day. Mm. But at least it was work it at was a time work. when most Americans, not most, but a lot of Americans were not working. I was working. 12 years old, and they paid me 35 cents to take the mule and the, and the <laughs> wagon out for water. Mm. And they'd take, ice, they'd take milk cans and fill them with metal, fill them with ice. And when I got out to the workers, they were melting. All melted. Yeah, all melted, yeah. It was... But the feast that they had, it was just uh, all the women got together for Cook harvest. For okay. Oh, chicken, everything mm. you could think. I don't know how the men went back to work afterwards, okay. but they did. They should have taken yeah. a nap. Yeah. Now, Bill, let me ask you. Tell me what went inside the building. What was going when it was built? Tell me what type of stuff happened. Well, I remember they had dances down here. And these were open to the public? They open to the public. Sometimes it had uh, maybe the Lions Club or farming would come down here and get together to earn a little money. But everybody was welcome. Okay. I've so it's never, a community dance. Right? Yeah, I've never seen them turn anyone away. And, of course, every family had the boy and the girl and so forth and so on. So I'd be out here swimming, and my mom and dad would be up here having dinner and dancing. Okay. And uh, they were really trying to get rid of me because <laughs> I was so on Go down to the beach. And they, sometimes they'd put me down there in the water and say, <laughs> Maybe he won't come back, <laughs> but okay. they couldn't get rid of me. Okay. So you kept to coming me back. Home. Yeah, I kept okay. coming back. But it was very beautiful. We just took it for granted yeah. because you could swim over on the other side of the road there where the ferries docked, or you could swim over here. And uh, up the road was a camp that I went to. So this whole area, I knew it. Every little pebble. This was like your backyard. It's a big yeah, backyard. Yeah, it was like I, you know, had been born here. And, of course, they had the Episcopal camp, and everybody worked together. It was no individual can go here, and none can go here, and all that. It was open it for It was everybody. wide open, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And most of this land came from the farms. So they didn't have people living right down on the edge of the shore and saying, you can't cross my beach. They didn't care. You could cross any beach, could shoot ducks, catch crabs. And pick up different ornaments up and down the beach. The bay was the bay, way. and everyone used it. It was free it. to the whole Ken Island, but, and that's yeah. the way I grew up here. Yeah. Bill, let me ask you, then, and then I'll ask Nick too. Tell me a little bit about Camp Wright. Now, that was Camp Wright, uh, which still is in existence now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, it's right up the road here, or up the beach here. I'd say about uh, maybe a quarter of a mile, half mile, and that would be Camp Wright. And they had all the cabins there named after different parts of Queen Anne's County, like Pocomoke and so forth and so on. And I think uh, one, two, three, I'd say about six kids could sleep in each cabin. So my mom would bring me down here and dad and leave me for three weeks. Three weeks and as soon as it was a summer that camp was, that you could Yeah, it was a summer camp. And uh, I think I only had to pay $7 a week. So for dollars I was here for the summer. And they fed you, and had a recreational fed activities? Fed you, had a, all kinds of recreation. And actually at Camp Wright, I learned how to swim. Actually I didn't know how to swim when I came there. And touch right in the bay? Huh? In the bay? Yeah, yeah. right out here in the bay. They had uh, different ones that were head of cabins and all. And they would take us out, a couple guys there would take us out and teach us how to swim. And gradually I learned how to swim from being just waiting to part of being paddle able to swim, and learning dog your paddle, till finally I could swim just as good as Esther Williams. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I I loved the camp right. It was and, nice. But I was homesick, so, let me tell you. Oh, I bet you weren't. I missed my mother and oh. father and I felt so bad at night. But but my dad would come down in the evening sometime, bring my mother and I was really happy then. But I was so homesick. And you're only three miles, what, mile, three miles Three from miles home? away. Yeah. And I could holler almost at <laughs> Stevensville. But Make that didn't do any good. I love my mother and father. But gradually I grew up and was glad to see them, but didn't really miss them that much. Now, how long did you do that? All the way to high school? Yeah, I was, uh, I started when I was about six years old. And I went till I was uh, 12 or 13 oh, years this old. This is a big part of your life. Every year, I'd come down here three uh, weeks. Good. Nick, now how about you? Same thing? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty I much I mean, a so. lot of the local kids, that's what the parents did. They just said, take a week or two? Or? Yeah, and, and when we got older, he, he cut it off at 12. But I remember uh, when we were in high school, we used to get our dates and come back here and park at nighttime. Okay. And you could see the ferries all night up till 1 o'clock. And then also the bay liners would run. And what's a bay line? Norfolk North? and Richmond. Okay. They were passenger. They, they took people from Richmond okay. and Norfolk 
to Baltimore. Okay. And to see, they were beautiful old white wooden ships. And, and they just be going right by. Oh yeah, they go by, and and it was the era of the big band. You turn your radio. Off. Sometimes you couldn't you get started. Can. You had to push your car off your girl. Kidding me? Yeah, because no. um, in those days you had a six volt battery and didn't last you know too long. No, no. We used to. Oh, it was wonderful. And we come down here at nighttime. We've been down here a lot of nights and have. Uh, beach parties, and we'd get driftwood and build big bonfires. bonfires and oh yeah, and have hot dogs and. Uh, it was and a whole different. I mean, you didn't oh. have like now the parents. And look, I understand why. We call them helicopter parents. They won't let their kids go out the front door mm -hmm. unless they're with them. You guys was a little rough and ready era, right? Hey, yeah. Nick, you're going to be safe yep. down there. Bill, you're going to be safe. No problems. I don't remember any kid getting kidnapped no. or even molested. I mean, you could send your. Three, a daughter, two dollars, three dollars, walk down the road, and nobody would touch. And you think about it. They'd either. walk down here and come back. Nowadays, you're afraid to let them I'm out. the front, front door. Long. It's crazy. And another thing I wanted to sure. point out to you, um, his aunt taught English. We called her Mrs. Denny. She was professor of English. Wonderful okay. lady. At the at the high school. At the high school. school. Stephenville High Stephen School. Stephenville High. And uh, she wrote an article called Indians of Kent Island. Okay. And she passed away, but her daughter Joan was a good friend of mine, and I happened to be the president of the Steamboat High School Alumni Association. And I said, Joni, I'm doing a third book, and I'd like to use that article. She said, my mom would love it. Oh, great. So I did it, and I put it in here, and I wanted to say, somewhere between here and Route 50. All right. So and we're talking last, a mile or two? Yeah. Was the last known residence of the Mattapique Indians, and okay. they were in log cabins. Actually, okay, so talk about that a bit. Well, yeah. I don't know too much. Okay. Em, Miss Emily, she, she just, uh, she loved to talk about all the Indians. And, and, and uh, now, when she talked about them in a historical sense? Yes, they, oh okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, what was the gentleman's name? Truitt, Dr. Truitt? Yeah, R.B. Truitt. Yeah. yeah. He was doing a history of Kent Island. Okay. Yeah, okay. Trying to. And the Indians yeah, lived right where we... Great Neck, Dr. Truitt did. Yes. Okay. Great Neck. That, yeah. That's right, that's uh -huh. right. And, and uh, Mrs. Denny worked with him, and others worked, and the Episcopal Church really worked on, on, on mm -hmm. trying to do some of the history. But the Indians were hers completely. And this was the Mattapique tribe. Mattapique tribe. They, and oh, they're right were, where we are right now? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I think they were right in this locality. Yeah. That's how this place got its name, okay. Mattapique. There, there but, were all kinds of Indians. Let me tell you something. The Indians didn't stay in one spot, like most people say. They come here and camp year-round. They were nomads. They traveled around the circumference of uh, Ken Island. Okay. So they had different places. They would be at different times of the season, year. Season, okay. And you could actually go around and find different little pieces of stone, arrowheads, hatchet heads, and all that in these locations where they would stay. They for would stay and cook, and they would live two. for a while. Yeah. Okay. It depended on the weather, okay. you know. Well, summertime they'd be getting oysters, which one mm -hmm. I read, they could just wait out in the water mm -hmm. and grab the oysters right this out of the bottom the of the bed. This was the ideal bed. place for crabs and oysters, and other places would be good for clams and deer and muskrats, and they use those skins and trade with the people up in the Susquehanna sure. okay. Flats and so forth. I think they trade them skins for arrowheads because the rocks up that way were a lot stronger and wouldn't chip, Is that right? so they okay. use those for their arrows, and then they trade those different stones for skins. And these people up north didn't have the skins that we had here on Ken Island because of the water and so forth. Imagine so, the Mattapique Indians, Billy Mayer, sitting here and seeing John Smith sewing up. Said, "There goes the neighborhood." Mm -hmm. right? well, I wanted to do well. That's the same way we felt when they set up the, the Bay Bridge. Bridge. That's right. <laughs> I wanted Us one, Indians didn't like. one little article. And she says that there were um, so many different tribes of Indians, but she said there are spots on Kent Island where one would look towards the Chesapeake Bay and imagine he is living in the days of 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. He sees only cleared fields, dark pines going to a pebbly beach, a broad expanse of blue water, a sailboat entering a narrow cove. If he is a student of Indian lore and if his imagination wanders freely, he may well believe that a dugout canoe manned by Wakami's, Wakami's Indians and laden with beaver hides will presently crawl around a point of land and head towards the approaching sails. He may believe that beside him as he watches squats a friendly brown-faced black-haired Mattapig boy ready to do his bidding. So this, this is what it, in her, when she did this history, this is what she... We can just see both you guys sitting here, how quiet it is, oh. how peaceful it is. I mean, besides, I don't hear, I call them heat bugs. I don't, 
I don't hear a single sound, right? Mm -mm. I mean, mm -mm. just as quiet the last as time we were any mosquitoes or anything. No, really the nice. last time we were here with Melvin Clark, that's before God took him home, uh, they were working on this. And, and really, uh, uh, Steve Davis was head of the Parks and Rec, and Nancy Kazosi was uh, uh, his assistant. And we'd come down here and they'd say, what do you think about this and what do you think of it? And, and we would give our input to what it, what it was like because they were depending on us. Sure. But we were sitting on this porch over here and it got so quiet like this. And I said, well, guys, I hate to say this, but it's time to go because my wife will be home soon and she likes me to be here when she gets home. And uh, nobody moved. And I said, it's so peaceful, you don't <laughs> want to leave, do you? It's like... We were back in, huh. in the old days. You just days. turn the time machine off yeah. here, don't we? Yeah. And it just so is finally, nobody would move. Well, I got up and said, we're going. I started to truck. Yeah, it, was just, it was a day just like this. You uh, see how quiet no, it is? it's beautiful. Dad. I mean, I know about you guys. I could stretch out right here and take a nap <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> I'm right on top of you. <laughs> I, had, I had luck. I had help from the county commissioners. Uh, when we got this place back, they did everything they could to help make it what it was. And, you, and without spending a lot of time, we, you found this at a certain point. This building was just about destroyed. It was. And, it was. And but we had a dedication. The commissioners came, every one of them. They opened it up to the public, county employees, everybody. And one Christmas, just before Christmas, Bill, you remember this, mm -hmm. every, light, every window here had and a light. candle in it, uh, big Christmas beautiful. tree, Christmas lights out here. This was all twined. I've got a picture of it somewhere. We had a dinner, you couldn't believe, buffet. Oh, we had crab balls, we everything. had oysters, we had everything. They were into it, and if it wasn't, I want to tell you, if the county commissioners of that era hadn't helped us, this, this building been. still would be yeah. destroyed. I mean, it's a beautiful looking yeah. building. Hey, guys, let me just switch back a little bit. Let's go back to the ferries. Tell me a little bit about a daily ferry, ferry schedule. You know how you were talking about how mm -hmm. there's one ferry mm -hmm. and then two? I mean, mm -hmm. it was like, uh, it was well, a, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I remember it. Nikki, Nikki worked on the fact on the ferries. In fact, I never worked on them, but I rode across them a lot of times. But I could come down here, and they knew all the people on the ferry knew me so well that they wouldn't even let me pay to, when I you got on the ferry. How much was it for the person who had to pay? I think it was like twenty-five or thirty cents. And that's all. It was. And, and, but that was a lot of money to me. Oh, in those times. And yeah. my dad gave me a nickel, and I thought I was rich. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay. So you can imagine 35 cents. You would load it. They would let us go, Bill, that is not going to pay. Get on here, Bill. <laughs> and I'd get on, and you might have been in the crew working on a ferry at the time. Uh, but they wouldn't know. let me pay. And we'd go across to Annapolis at the foot right there where the Naval Academy okay. is. It docked right there. We'd walk up into Annapolis and go to the movies, and that was maybe a quarter. And then come on the old back. The Circle home. Theater was that was there. What was it might have been the Circle. Okay. It was around the uh, Circle there. By the there. State House. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know the name of it, okay. but anyway, I'd go over there and be. Uh, I always travel with a couple pretty girls, and they were older than I was, so they take me over there. We'd go to movies and then come on back. And when we got on the ferry, they wouldn't take our money. They'd give us free ride across. So you spend we a couple hours in Annapolis and come back, or a yeah, day? a couple we'd hours. We see a movie and walk all through it to five and ten cents store. Okay. There. A little day trip. Uh huh. Yeah, like a day, day trip. trip. My mother would let me go with these two girls, a couple years older than I was, and I enjoyed it. But anyway, we'd come on back, and then I'd show my mother and tell her all about the moving picture and all. But I was a young little guy. Nobody kidnapped me or mm -hmm. hurt me or did anything. I keep and saying that, this, but times were different. Yeah, entirely different. Now, poor little girl can't even ride down the street. Mm -hmm. Parents in it. Sure. Look at this. This yeah. is what we built it for. And they're we all brought it back the for the people. As we're to speaking, use. about a dozen people have walked yep. by and said, yep. Nick, let me ask you, was it like a, re when I say regular schedule, if I drove here at a certain time in the morning with the commuters, I mean, were there oh, say, yeah. six in the morning or seven, was there a real busy time for the family? Yeah. Uh, we started uh, the, first, the first schedule, we left here at five o'clock in the morning. Okay. We loaded at 4 30, we left here at five. Now these were passenger ferries or car that drive cars, the cars on. Yeah, drive yeah. the cars on. And, and um, that was a nice. The O'Connor left 
Sandy Point at five o'clock. Okay. And we passed Midway, you know, and uh, about eight o'clock, seven o'clock, uh, you would you would get your passengers walk on, go into Annapolis to work for the Treasury Department. Okay. And uh, but it they ran from it, originally they stopped running at like nine o'clock at night, but it got so busy in the forties that they kept it going from uh, five in the morning until one thirty at night. Okay, so you could have a little bit of a night, you could be a little bit of a night owl in Annapolis and come back in oh, yes. as late as yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. But Nick, excuse me, yeah. Nick, tell them about you slept right on the Matter Peaks Ferry. Oh yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. this guy slept you there, ate there. there. That that was your home while you were on a yeah. twelve-hour shift. Yeah. yeah, he could get up, uh, sleep there all night, and get up next morning to have his breakfast ready, wouldn't yeah. it? Nick? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we had the best food. All. Mary Mahars Day. No, and and uh, up up to the lots. I can't think of uh, Aunt Ida. Um, I just can't think of all of them, isn't it terrible? That's right. Were, were they were uh, black or white? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the galley crew was black. Yes, all mm -hmm. black. Yeah. Now we you and, and I'm sorry. have your breakfast ready and everything. Oh yeah. Now you guys laid back there and you know you talk one another well, we and though. do a little. <laughs> well, they call it work, but it wasn't really. <laughs> he work. says it's work. It was more of a vacation <laughs> on those series, <laughs> and they would play cards all night. Oh and yeah. This, no, that, no, and no, we do that. Go ahead and tell all that stuff. Oh. Yeah. He he didn't didn't do it. You got to have a couple. Well, uh, now let me ask you, Nick. You were actually you were working for the state. You were working for a private company, or no, were you no. actually working? When it, be, when it began, it was a private company. But in yeah. 1941 or 42, the state took it over. Okay. Uh -huh. And and they took this over. And this was a warehouse for any supply. Our uniforms were. If we needed a pair of pants, shirt, hat, we came here. So this if is we the, needed the clean ferry. Are the states? The uh, state uh, depot. Mr. Harry stuff. Hopkins from Stevensville was a was a man in charge, and all local people. There was five or six of them that worked here. And they kept the, the maintenance of the of the yards. They also did all the timekeeping, okay. ordering supplies, things like that. Yeah. So you well, uh, yeah. excuse me. Okay. But on the other hill, remember Harry Hopkins was had that big brick building. Well, that there? was built. That was built in like Later. 48. Mm -hmm. 48. We, in 48, and they put the people were there. Harry yeah. Hopkins. I, yeah. Yeah, I knew him very well. Now, who is Harry Hopkins? Harry Hopkins was the uh, supervisor here. Okay. He was a he was, state employee. Yeah, supervised he supervised the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. And. Uh, He's buried in Stevensville, like all the okay, other local okay. people that, you know, they're... they're so you he was, a, excuse me, he was a county commissioner at one time. I never knew that. Yeah. That right? I, I wrote a book, or I didn't write a book, I put a book together for Ken Island Heritage Society. I never And knew he that. was one of the county commissioners, yeah. Well, see, he's older than I am. He's okay, he has all these yeah, secrets. Yeah, that's now, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> now, as a state employee, you got state benefit. I mean, I realize oh, this yeah. is during the Depression, so you were actually a state employee yeah. who's providing... Uh, waterway access and transportation for the people of the county. Yeah, I got uh, my my paycheck was uh, we got paid uh, every two weeks sixty four dollars. Okay. No taxes. And you, but you got fed and got, you had oh, got fed. Housing. Uniforms. And yeah. You, uniforms. What was the uniform of a ferry worker? Uh, it, we wore uh, khakis like the navy. Okay. And uh, they, they were nice, uh, good quality. Oh, they like yeah. a tan, Nick. Yeah, tan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So look at now, guys. Look at all. my time's about up for this show. But I'm going to ask you guys, and I want you to put your thinking caps, well, where are we going next? Okay, we've sat on a porch in downtown Stevensville and talked about it a bit, right? We're now here at the Mattapique Clubhouse. Where do you want to go next? Well, you know, we, we still have the beach to do. We well, how about next time we do the, the beach? Where the ferry is. Okay. And, and you know, we, we got Roman Cook, where the ferry came in there okay. and went across to uh, Claiborne. Well, how about if it's all right? La Point. All right. Well, how about if it's okay with you guys? Well, well, I've got my calendar in the car, and we'll tell everybody in the audience. How about we do next week's show from the beach? Would that be good? Mm, that'd be fine. Okay, and you don't, we don't have to wear those funny outfits. Which one? Well, we, you, yeah, no, the old ones. The old, remember the old bathing suits that had the tops and the shorts together? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, like you were fully dressed, but yes. you really went swimming. Yes, I mean, we, don't, we don't have to wear those, because <laughs> yeah. that sounds yeah, good? That okay. sounds good to me. Well, look at guys, as usual, Nick and Billy, thanks a million. Oh, You've you taken welcome. me. This is the first time I've been here, and I've lived here 36 years. I okay? wish you could get inside, it, it, but it, it's locked. It? No, we'll, at one time we'll do that. We'll right? do that. It's but, beautiful inside. But we're at the Mattapique Clubhouse. Folks, if you haven't been here, there's a beautiful beach. We're sitting here. It's 1052. It's 90 degrees in downtown Stevensville, but here there's a nice breeze. Mm -hmm. There's no mosquitoes, and it's just like I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds of silence here. We've had a delightful time here at the Mattapique Clubhouse. I encourage everybody come on down and visit it. It's your public park. It's a great place. Unfortunately, these two characters aren't going to be here to tell you the stories, but how about we're going to see you in another week and be down at the beach with more tales from Ken Island.
I'm Fred McNeil. Thanks for watching QAC TV 7. My time's up. Thanks for your time, and we're going to see you at the beach next time.